As has already been alluded to, since Hamas's terrorist attack, our country has seen a disgusting rise in anti-Semitism. Jewish businesses attacked, Jewish schools marked with red paint, and Jewish families hiding who they are. And we've seen an appalling surge in Islamophobia, racist graffiti, mosques forced to ramp up security, British Muslims and Palestinians spoken to as if they were terrorists. Does he agree with me that every member of this House has a duty, a duty, to work in their constituency and across the country to say no to this hate and to ensure every British Jew and every British Muslim knows that they can live their life free from fear and free from discrimination here in their own country? Mr Speaker, all of us in this House can play our part in stamping out those who seek to cause division and hate in our society. Uh, We will make sure that we continue funding, as I said, the Community Security Trust, uh, but also the equivalent protective security grant to protect mosques and other places of worship for the Islamic community in the UK. That funding was increased earlier this year. We will also remain in dialogue with the police to make sure that they are aware of the full tools at their disposal to arrest those who perpetrate hate crimes, incite racial or other religious violence. There is no place for that in our society, and I know this House will stand united in making sure that those who do this face the full force of the law. Thank you, Mr Speaker. We do not want this conflict to harm us here at home, and we do not want it to escalate in the Middle East, where there has been too much bloodshed, too much darkness for too long. A two-state solution, a Palestinian state alongside a safe and secure Israel, feels more distant than ever, but it remains the only way through. Does the Prime Minister agree that, because hope is at its thinnest, we must work our hardest to ensure the voices of division and despair are sidelined, and that, however difficult it seems, the hope of a political path to peace is maintained. Mr Speaker, it is precisely because it is that vision of a more hopeful, peaceful future that Hamas tried to destroy that we must redouble our efforts to try and bring that future about. And all our conversations that both myself and the Foreign Secretary have had with regional leaders, we've emphasised our commitment to making sure that we make progress on all the avenues that will lead towards that peaceful future, Uh, and that has been a feature of both mine and the Foreign Secretary's dialogue, and I'm confident that there is willingness in the region not to escalate this crisis beyond dealing with Hamas, the terrorist organisation, but also to strive very hard to a future where Palestinians and Israelis can coexist peacefully, side by side, and look forward to a future filled with dignity, security and prosperity.